This video is brought to you by Embato Elements. Stranger Things Season 4 just dropped and I thought it would be really fun to recreate a text fly through that happens in the intro. First things first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From here, we're gonna select the Final Cut title and that is so we can apply this effect in Final Cut Pro if we ever want to. I'm gonna go ahead and set my frame rate over to 2398. That's the frame rate that Stranger Things it was filmed at and I'm gonna leave my duration at 10 seconds. After you've pushed open, your project should look something like this. Let's go ahead and delete the type text here layer. We're gonna go ahead and select our text tool, click anywhere in your browser and go ahead and type whatever you want. I'm gonna do subscriber things. And then we'll jump into the inspector with our text selected and we can drag up the scale of our text and then we can jump over into our properties, click on this down arrow and reset the parameters so it's right in the center and we should also change our alignment. So now our subscriber things text is right in the middle. Let's go ahead and actually set this to something like 225. That is looking pretty good. Now I went ahead and did some Googling and this Benguiat, I don't know how to say the font name, is the font that kind of closely represents the Stranger Things font. So if you want to download that, you definitely can. I'll try and have a link down below. So now comes the part of flying through the text. One option would be trying to deal with the scaling and you could try and scale up your text like crazy. Um, to fly through it, but it gets pretty messy, especially when you get up in here into the 9000s and so. But you definitely could do that. You could change your anchor point settings so that you're flying more through the E. But there are some downsides to that. For example, you can't change where you're zooming in very easily. And also it just bogs down your computer a lot to work with scaling like that. So we're gonna try a different alternative that I find to be much better and more safe to use later as a template in Final Cut Pro and that is by using a 3D camera. First, let's go ahead and right click on this original title background and we'll create a group, then we'll pull that group out of the other group and I hate how the group system works in Apple Motion so just kind of shift it around until the title background is underneath everything. Then we'll go on up to add object and we're going to add a camera. Now let's go ahead and select keep as 2D so that our layers are set as 2D currently. Then we'll go to our group that has the subscribers things text and we'll click on this icon which will shift it over to a 3D layer. So now that we have that set up, wherever we move this camera in 3D space, the text will actually be moving in 3D, but our title background will be remaining the same. Let's go ahead and set up our zooming. So we could try and animate the position on this. That's definitely a viable option, but I really like the parameter behaviors in Apple Motion. So go ahead and select your rectangle tool and find the letter that you wanna zoom in on. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this E, just like so. And let's go ahead and disable Disable the outline on that rectangle. Now I'm gonna rename this rectangle to be the framer and I'm gonna drag this framer up into the 3D group actually. Select your camera, go up to behaviors, go to camera and select framing. Now all we need to do is drag our framer into the framing category here. If we look at our timeline, it's created this purple behavior and if we play through, our camera is zooming in to that dot. Now you'll notice it's really quite a sudden zoom. It's not very smoothed out. So let's go ahead and change a few parameters to get that looking much better. The first thing we're gonna wanna change is the orientation. Change it from orient to current over to orient to final. Honestly, I don't know why this isn't the default because the results are always so much better by having it orient to final. And it gets rid of some weird wobble that can happen with orient to current. Moving down, look at the position transition and change that over to 100%. When it's set to 50%, it's going to only take five seconds for the zoom to happen. When we set it out to a full 100%, now it's gonna take the full 10 seconds to perform the zoom. Moving further down, we can find the transition settings, change it from constant over to ease both. So now if we play through, you'll see how much smoother it is happening. It has a nice slow start builds up some speed, and then as it comes to the end, it slows down. Now we're not quite zooming in far enough, and that's why I love this method, because all we need to do to fix that is we could jump into the geometry settings and just bring down our size. So now it'll shrink down our object so that it's small enough for our camera to go ahead and fit inside of that letter. And what's really great is we can move this to any letter that we want. So now if we wanna zoom in on the B, we can totally do that. We could even zoom in on something like this S way over here and it just works perfectly. So now comes the part where we want to zoom through the text and actually see the background behind it. But really quick, I wanna tell you about our sponsor 
sponsor Envato Elements. Envato Elements is changing the game with their incredible subscription service. They offer unlimited access to over 55 million assets. I don't know if you realize how large of a number that is. It is ginormous. They offer fonts, photos, stock footage, music, sound effects, WordPress themes, Final Cut Pro, and Motion 5 templates. They offer a super simple license and your license still counts even after your subscription has ended. If you follow the link in the description, you will get 50% off when selecting the annual subscription. Do yourself a favor, my friends, level up your video editing library and get Envato Elements today. Select your title background, right click on it and select add image mask. You can also achieve that with command shift M. Drag the subscriber things text over into this well here in the image mask and then you should already start seeing the results that you want to see. I'm going to go ahead and disable our framer so we don't have to look at it and we should be flying right through the text just as we planned. Now something I've noticed is that the text actually starts out by being filled in with this nice red color and then it fades out. Now if we were to fade this out as it is, it would actually just make everything completely black because our image mask is based off of the alpha. So to fix that, we're going to actually need to create another duplicate layer, but we want that layer to actually take on the changes. So if we were to change the wording to say something like the Final Cut Bro, we want those changes to be applied. And that is where a clone layer comes in. So if I push K, that's going to create what's called a clone layer. And this clone layer is going to take on any of the changes that we apply to the subscriber text. Now, if I were to go into the subscriber text, and change the appearance and maybe make it red, that clone layer is going to still receive that same treatment, even though the original subscriber text is actually invisible. But what's great is we can apply changes to this clone layer. For example, if we want it to fade out, we can go into the properties, add a keyframe, move forward about you know two seconds, drop it down to zero. So now it has this fade out and yet we still have the ability to fly through the text as we had originally planned. But there is a problem. If we want to move this text around like in Final Cut Pro later on, we cannot do that because the two text layers actually have separate position entities. So to fix that, select your clone layer, go up to behaviors, go to basic motion and select align to. And this is going to actually lock the clone layer to the subscriber things layer. So drag the subscriber things layer into this well here. And now wherever we move it, both layers are going to move together. The next thing we need to fix is if you zoom in here, you'll actually notice how jagged these edges look. And that is because our render settings is currently set to normal. We're going to want to set that over to best and that should clean up our edges really nicely so that we can zoom right through them. So that actually about wraps it up. We now have this really great text that we can fly through. If we want, we can change under our framing the position transition time so that we can fly much faster. I can even set this down to something like 3%. So we'll just fly right through it really, really fast. I'm super excited to say this is actually a download for my patrons and there are on-screen controls to actually set the exact point that the camera zooms in as well as you can change the speed the coloring, all of that stuff. So that should be fun for you to play around with. Massive thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. They do offer a week long trial now. So if you wanna try that out, you don't have to pay a penny. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait to see you in the next one.